Uh, some say that this is a populist agenda. I've heard that. Uh, I disagree. It can't be populist because 99%, 99% of businesses in Europe are what we would define as small and medium-sized enterprises. That isn't populist. That is the environment and that is the economy. So I think that is quite important. It's one of the numbers I haven't heard. Um, you've heard the other numbers, the importance for our economy uh, across the board. So what are we doing about this? Well, what we've done in the Commission over the past years is to take a step back and we believe that a holistic approach is important. And I'll give you a couple of examples on how we're addressing this. I think structural measures. First, MIFID. Marcus Ferber, his leadership in Trilogs, uh, very determined, uh, uh, looking at all the right things. But in MIFID, you know we have a structural project in there for, for SME growth markets. It's not just relabeling, Anthony, as some people have said, an existing market. That's not what the SME growth market project in MIFID is about. It is a new regime, greater viability for SME companies, a structural process and not something uh, that any of the institutions, uh, Mr. Fairbrow, I'm speaking under your authority, but as far as I know, this is not something that anybody has structural and fundamental problems with in, in MIFID. Maybe on other areas, but this is really important to understand that the European institutions are actually joined up in this. I'll give you a couple of other examples uh, where we are taking a more holistic uh, 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 look at uh, the, the SME markets. The ratings environment. You want money, somebody's going to lend it to you. If you want somebody to lend money to you, that person really needs to know about your health and your viability. How do you get a rating as an SME? It's not obvious. It's expensive. It's a black hole, some say, to go to a ratings agency and to get that external rating. And ratings are not the flavor of the month in the regulatory regime uh, uh, nowadays. What are we doing about that? A couple of weeks from now, in November, there will be a workshop just two kilometers down the road in the Borchette Center where the Commission wants to discuss with a wide, uh, I think, variety of SMEs uh, uh, and other entities involved in that, how credit scoring for SMEs can actually develop. That's what SMEs need. They need to go out to a funding source and to explain, this is my company, this is the risk, this is my balance sheet, these are the opportunities, but in a much more accessible way. And we've had some very, very good examples in countries like Portugal, whereas this has really picked up. And we want to use that and other examples in a discussion with credit scoring for ratings uh, and to have a much more appropriate ratings environment for SMEs. You've heard about the other ideas, peer-to-peer -peer lending, crowdfunding. All of these might be small steps in the ocean, but if you actually add up all of these drops, sorry for the mixed met metaphor, uh, you will actually find that there is probably quite a lot of traction out there. They're structural measures, but we also need to take a holistic look at what we have out there. And what we have discussed and what we've found talking to the industry and to the regulatory environment is that one of the biggest obstacles for SMEs is simply the proportionality of the requirements that we have in disclosure requirements in existing regulation. And if you look at the proposals uh, that we put out there uh, that are being discussed in terms of the uh, prospectus requirements with much lower requirements for, for SMEs to lower the costs, I think you think uh, you'll see that it actually does help the, uh, the, the environment out there. If you look at the uh, proposals under the market abuse uh, system, again, disclosure requirements for SMEs are being reduced. Costs will be lowered, very, very important to do that. Uh, another very good example, I think, is the venture capital example that we've, we've put out there, social entrepreneurship funds. We're seeing this pick up very, very slowly. There is a link out there, obviously, with the, uh, the securitization agenda, Anthony, that you mentioned a bit earlier. But I take good heart in this. Um, the former president of the New York Federal Reserve who chaired the uh, Basel Committee, uh, chaired the Basel Committee when we discussed and negotiated Basel II, and his name was Bill McDonough. And Bill McDonough, halfway through that tra trajectory, came into the Basel Committee one day and he said, I've been to Germany. I know what a Mittelstand is. And Bill McDonough was truly, truly dedicated to this. He had understood the importance of SME financing and access of SMEs 
to bank finance, something that was not natural to him coming from the United States of America. And I can tell you from that moment after Bill McDonough had visited Germany, had engaged for a period with the German Mittelstand and their needs, immediately we saw in an international piece of banking legislation the term SME pop up. And I can tell you we spent eight, nine, ten months as bank regulators discussing lower risk curves, plateaus for risk weightings for exposures to SMEs by banks. Really, really important. And why do I raise that now? Because over the past years, we've seen some encouraging figures if we look at the German stock exchanges. And again, I refer to Germany, which seems to be the breeding chamber for a lot of these uh, new and important developments. Four out of eight German exchanges, four out of eight of the German exchanges over the past year have traded uh, Mittelstand bonds. I don't know what the German, Mittelstand bonds, never sang the of Deutsch. Mittelstand bonds, um, uh, uh, they're actively traded. You're looking at uh, 25, up to 225 million euros in, uh, in value. These are picked up by retail investors, but most importantly, we've uh, been told that 60 to 75% of these bonds are picked up by institutional investors. And one of the reasons is the stable returns and their yields on average between 7 to 8.3% uh, uh, for long-term investors. Really important. And these are the encouraging signals that we're picking up, that we're building into our horizontal program on how to gain uh, greater access by SMEs to the, uh, the capital markets. I think the trend is there. I think the trend is not bank or market financing. I don't think it's and or, it's and and. And I think that, think that is a healthy concoction and combination for the financing of this important uh, segment of our industry and our economy.